So we'll continue our topic of edge binding, the stress concentration factor for various arrangement. As far as the some standard geometry are considered, we can remember the certain equations like we have a circular hole or we have elliptical hole in an infinite plate. So let's consider here we have a elliptical hole. The major axis of the hole is parallel to the load and the minor axis is perpendicular to the load. So this figure represents a ellipse and the major axis of the ellipse is parallel to the load. So this stress here is representing the nominal stress and we want to calculate here that what will be the maximum stress due to elliptical hole. This dimension which one is measured parallel to the major axis and is a half of a major axis is A and the minor axis half of it. Let's say this dimension equal to dimension B. So the same ellipse I have shown here, this one is representing the major axis and the total length of major axis will be equal to A plus A that will be equal to 2 times of A. This one is representing the vertical distance is representing the minor axis is B plus B that equal to 2 times of B. So the theoretical stress concentration factor is represented by KT is equal to 1 plus 2 times the semi minor axis that equal to B divided by the semi major axis that equal to A. So this is KT is equal to 1 plus 2 times of B by A. But this time the load is parallel to the major axis. Second situation is that the load is perpendicular to the major axis. In the second case we have a ellipse and the major axis is perpendicular to the load. And this dimension here which one is a half of a major axis is same as equal to A and half of the minor axis that will be this distance will be equal to B. In this case we have theoretical stress concentration factor will be 1 plus 2 times of A divided by B. See so always remember here we have 1 plus 2 times here A is a perpendicular dimension. So you have to remember perpendicular dimension divided by parallel dimension. Now check here B. B is what? B is perpendicular dimension and A is parallel dimension. So this is a better way to remember the theoretical stress concentration factor. In general, I will write this value as KT is equal to 1 plus 2 times the perpendicular dimension to parallel dimension. So forget about this B and A. It is better to remember KT equal to 1 plus 2 times of perpendicular dimension to the load divided by parallel dimension to the load. If you want to develop the formula for this one, we have 1 plus 2 times perpendicular dimension to the load will be equal to B divided by A. This time the perpendicular dimension is equal to A divided by B. So naturally if you compare the ellipse in a horizontal position and the ellipse in a vertical position, this value of KT will be higher value because here A is a larger dimension as compared to B. And in this case, we have 1 plus 2 times of B and B is a smaller value. So theoretical stress concentration factor in this case will be smaller as compared to elliptical hole if we made vertical. And that is quite obvious also because if I draw the streamlines here, the streamlines will be much parallel and there is little concentration at the vertical section. If you have an elliptical hole is vertical, then there is a lot of stress concentration in this small area and the theoretical stress concentration factor will be higher value. Now they can exchange the value of B and A. So don't remember the formula in the form of A and B. They can say that the major axis length will be equal to 2 times of B. So they will just exchange the two idea about the major axis and minor axis as far as exam point of view is considered. But you always remember the here that a KT is always equal to 1 plus 2 perpendicular dimension divided by parallel dimension. Now the special case of a elliptical hole is a circular hole. And in the case of circular hole, the dimension A is same as equal to dimension B. So we have theoretical stress concentration factor is equal to 1 plus 2 times times of A by B or B by A. They are one and same. So this value is equal to 1. So we'll get KT is equal to 1 plus 2. So in the circular hole, this value is always fixed. That equal to 3. So if the table value is not given, we can able to calculate the theoretical stress concentration factor. 
if the major axis of the elliptical hole is parallel to the load. In that case it will be 1 plus 2 times and you have to remember the perpendicular dimension is B divided by parallel dimension. And in case elliptical hole the major axis is perpendicular to the load. Case we have KT is equal to 1 plus 2 times perpendicular dimension. So you have to first check out what is the direction of the stress that is load and then you have to select the perpendicular dimension. This time perpendicular dimension will be equal to A and the parallel dimension is B. So we have KT is equal to 1 plus 2 times of A by B. And if you have a circular hole then the dimension A and B are one and same. So we can use any of these two formula and we have theoretical stress concentration factor is 1 plus 2 that equal to 3. So theoretical stress may be expected on elliptical hole and the circular hole. But if the graph is provided then you can, you can use the graph then you can record the theoretical stress constant vector from the graph. The number of times the question comes how to calculate the nominal stress. For nominal stress you have to consider that area where is the stress concentration. Suppose we have a groove is provided in a shaft and we have tensile load is equal to F. And we have radius of the groove is equal to R. On the left hand side we have shown the diameter of the shaft and on the other side we have shown the diameter of the groove. So exactly at here we have a stress concentration and this area you have to calculate. But before this you have to first calculate diameter of the groove. So diameter of the groove will be same as equal to the diameter of the shaft. And this distance is R and bottom distance also equal to R. That will be D minus 2 times of R. Where R is the radius of the groove. Once you know the diameter of the groove then we can calculate area will be equal to pi by 4 multiplied by diameter of the groove square. Once you calculate the area, then using the value of F, we can calculate nominal stress. So in this case, we have nominal stress will be equal to force upon the area of the groove. That will be same as equal to 4 times of F divided by pi into D square. And then you have to select the table for the required arrangement. And you have to record the value of theoretical stress concentration factor. Once you record the theoretical stress concentration factor, you are able to calculate the maximum stress. So in this case, we have to find out the area of this group, which has a diameter equal to D. And this diameter D will be equal to the diameter of the shaft minus 2 times the radius of the group. Once you calculate nominal stress, then you can record the value of KT from table and we have sigma max equal to KT multiplied by nominal stress. To reduce the stress concentration in the case of step shaft which has a sudden change in diameter from D to D is not used. Rather we have certain fillet is provided of radius equal to R. So we have maximum stress is produced at the fillet. So this area you have to calculate for nominal stress and this area will be same as equal to pi by 4 multiplied by D square. So based on force F, we can calculate nominal stress as force upon the area A. That will be same as equal to 4 times of F divided by pi A2. The diameter of smaller shaft that equal to lowercase d square. And again record the value of theoretical stress concentration factor from the graph. And you can calculate the value of sigma maximum will be same as equal to theoretical stress concentration factor for the step shaft and the actual loading multiplied by nominal stress. And in the third case we will consider here we have a flat plate of width equal to W and thickness equal to H is loaded uniaxially by using the two forces F and we have a semicircular notch of radius equal to R. So at this section we have the width will be equal to D and this width D will be same as equal to W that is the width of the plate minus 2 times the radius of a notch. So 2 times of R. One is from top side, other is from bottom side. Based on this and the thickness is equal to H, we can calculate the area. So area will be equal to D multiplied by thickness that equal to H. So in this case we have the nominal stress is based on the area A which is equal to force divided by D multiplied by H or is same as equal to force divided by W minus 2 times of R 
multiplied by thickness of the plate equal to h and again the procedure for calculation of the maximum stress is to find out the value of theoretical stress concentration factor from the graph so if the numerical will appear for this in examination that is in gate examination they will provide you the value of kt only idea here is that how to calculate the value of nominal stress a nominal stress we have to always consider at the minimum area the minimum area resisting the given force is at the groove here we have minimum area which is resisting the force or here we have the minimum area and here is the chance of stress concentration so based on the theory we will take some numerical that is on the elliptical hole circular roll and the fillet radius and we will find out the value of sigma max for this numerical he has said that the maximum stress induced at the edge of an elliptical hole of major axis equal to 4 mm and minor axis equal to 1.5 mm in a flat plate we have to find out if you observe the figure here the stress is given acting horizontally so perpendicular dimension will be equal to a and the parallel dimension will be equal to b so it is measured from the axis to the edge so we have given here this dimension that is the major axis is equal to 4 mm so we have two times of a represent here the major axis and that value is given as equal to 4 mm so we have dimension a will be 4 by 2 that equal to 2 mm minor axis represent here 2 times of b so we have 2 times of b will be minor axis and the length of minor axis is given as 1.5 mm so we have b is equal to 1.5 divided by 2 is 0.75 mm here dimension a is perpendicular to the load and dimension b is parallel to the load once we know the dimension which one is perpendicular to load and the parallel load we can use the definition of theoretical stress concentration factor so theoretical stress concentration factor is nothing but 1 plus 2 times perpendicular dimension divided by parallel dimension to the load that will be equal to 1 plus 2 times we have perpendicular dimension will be equal to 2 so it is multiplied by 2 divided by parallel dimension equal to 0.75 so this answer of a theoretical stress concentration factor is very close to 6.33 now the nominal stress shown here is the value of sigma t so using the theoretical stress concentration factor we can maximum stress sigma max equal to theoretical stress concentration factor multiplied by nominal stress that equal to 6.33 multiplied by value of sigma t that is this is the nominal stress a semi infinite plate shown in the figure the theoretical stress concentration factor kt we have to find out we have major axis is given as 2a and the minor axis is given as 2b now this time the load is perpendicular to the dimension of 2a and you have to take the half of it so half of it will be equal to a and half of this will be equal to b which of this equation gives the correct value of theoretical stress concentration factor we have to find out so we'll use the definition of stress concentration factor this time the dimension so this one is representing the nominal stress and this time the major axis is perpendicular so we have major axis is perpendicular whereas we have minor axis is parallel so theoretical stress concentration factor is 1 plus 2 times perpendicular dimension divided by parallel dimension that equal to 1 plus 2 times perpendicular dimension this time is a major axis you have to take the half of major axis that equal to a divided by the parallel dimension which is a minor axis and you take the half of this that equal to b so we have stress concentration factor is 1 plus 2 times of a divided by b 1 plus 2 times of a divided by b choice b is correct choice determine the maximum normal stress in megapascal developed in the bar of uniform thickness equal to 5 mm so thickness is perpendicular to the board 
and we have width is equal to 40 mm one hole is provided of diameter equal to 20 mm and we have here the fillet is provided the load value is given as 8 kN. Theoretical stress concentration factor at fillet is known. That is this value of stress concentration is known is equal to KT1. One stress concentration you have to find out at the hole that will be equal to KT2. And for circular hole we have KT2 is always equal to 3 that is known to us. So let's say here 40 mm is the width equal to W1 diameter is equal to 20 and this width will be equal to w2 and we have thickness is equal to h is given as 5 mm to find out the maximum stress at the fillet we have to find out the nominal stress at this section so let's consider here the section aa so as far as the section A is considered, we have to take the width equal to W2 and height equal to 5 mm to find out the nominal stress. So let me show here the width equal to W2 and the thickness equal to H. So on this area, the force P is acting. So this value is same as equal to W2 and this one is thickness equal to H. On this one, we are acting a force which one equal to 8000 Newton. So this will produce a nominal stress. Our calculation is for section A. The nominal stress is given as force that is equal to P divided by the area that equal to W2 multiplied by H. So in this case we have force is given as 8000 and we have width W2 is equal to 20 and the thickness H is equal to 5. So 8000 divided by 100 so in this case we will get a nominal stress is close to 80 megapascal and we have kt for the fillet is given as 1.4 so we have maximum stress produced at section aa will be equal to kt for fillet multiplied by nominal stress sigma nominal at section aa is equal to 1.4 multiplied by 80 that is 80 plus 32 that equal to 112 megapascal so this is a maximum stress produced at section a now we will consider one section where we have a circular hole now consider the section bb so for section bb we have to develop this area so this area will be same as we have width is equal to w1 then we have a circular hole so and we have a thickness here so this area will going to resist as well as this area will going to resist so in this fashion we can develop the section so this total area will be equal to we have width equal to w1 minus the diameter of hole equal to d thickness equal to h and at the same point we have same force equal to P so we have nominal stress at section BB will be P divided by area which is W1 minus D multiplied by H so in this case we have P is same as equal to 8000 divided by W1 which is equal to 40 diameter of hole is equal to 20 and multiplied by thickness equal to 5 so in denominator again we are getting 100 so we have nominal stress produced is equal to 80 megapascal and for circular roll we have kt2 equal to 3 so we have maximum stress at section bb will be equal to kt2 multiplied by the sigma nominal which is equal to 3 multiplied by 80 is equal to 240 megapascal so at section AA we have maximum stress is produced is 112 megapascal and at section BB maximum stress is produced equal to 240 megapascal and we are interested to know the maximum normal stress so out of 112 and 240 this value is a maximum value so in this entire cross section the maximum stress is produced on the top of the circular hole or at the bottom of circular hole.
the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here